Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another episode of RE Asia Hour. My name is Chris Choi from RE, and I will be your moderator for the day. This is going to be another fun filled but very informative episode because we are going to talk about one of the most crucial roles on set, the first assistant camera, also known as the focus puller. To help us understand their duties on set and how these roles are different in each region, we are invited guest speakers from different parts of Asia. They are expert focus puller who has been in the industry for quite a long time. They will be giving us a closer look at the experience, user practice, and techniques of a focus puller, and also share their take on RE electronic control system. We hope you will learn a lot from them today. So let's get into it. Our first guest is joining us from Indonesia via video call. He is a veteran focus puller who has been in the industry for more than 10 years now. He began his career in the year 2007 and has continued to shoot several film and dramas. Some of his more notable work include HBO Asia original period uh, drama, Rise, and the Indonesian films, The Lights Come For Us, which you can catch on Netflix. Now, please welcome uh, the first AC, Adatia Atman. Hi, Adi, how are you? Hi, Chris. How are you? I'm good. Thank yeah, you. Good to see you. Thank you very much for joining good us. <laughs> so, how's the production situation in Indonesia? What is the new normal there like? And I know you are right now. Uh, you are on set right now, right? <laughs> yeah, Chris, right. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, what a coincidence. Uh, today, actually, I'm uh, I'm in the middle of the shoot for commercial project. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm in a public uh, services in a restaurant, and I have to wear masks here for our safety, for our own safety. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And Indonesia nowadays is actually we're just starting to get normal in the latest in last week. I think we started to go back uh, to do our job to do commercial feature film and a lot of project is coming in also and it's slowing down to start new new normal i think here yeah okay so uh, one of your recent words is a film called uh, the lights come for us can you tell us what is it about yeah my latest project uh, is one of one of my latest project is the night come for us you know, the project it's for uh, Netflix and yeah the, the the movie actually is about the family the triad action and how they I mean like uh, the action they're living in a triad and mm. but, but actually it's a good person they have to be fighting with all those my videos and it's really great great movie to watch and it's a lot of fun <laughs> Okay, so uh, given that is an action filler, how challenging was it to be the focus puller for this film? Oh yeah, um, uh, say again, I mean, how? So uh, this is an action filler, so uh, I think, I, I guess it must be very challenging uh, doing all the focus pulling job. Yeah, uh, for me, it's so challenging to, to mm -hmm. do focus pulling on an action because the thing is, uh, it's not like normally drama, mm -hmm. and a lot of a lot of scene, uh, a lot of uh, shot that have to be taken only one take every yeah. shot. So <laughs> it's it's quite challenging and it's quite uh, they. Uh, I mean, you have to do it on the spot on and exactly there. There's no take two. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then uh, yeah. the angle uh, go very fast sometimes, maybe. And so fast, yes. And sometimes you just uh, have to anticipate more, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, happen, it's out of plan. So, yes. yes. But it's fun. I mean, it is fun for so focus pulling on the uh, action movie. I see, I see. Uh, all right, thank you for that, Adi. So uh, his yeah, movie, no uh, The Lights Come For Us, is uh, now available on uh, Netflix, so you guys can go check that out. So we are just going to uh, quickly introduce our next 
guess then we are going to see Adi again for the panel discussion way right after. So see you later, Adi. OK, see now later, uh, our next guest come all the way from South Korea. He enters the motion picture industry uh, in the year 2013 as part of the camera department. He has shot multiple projects ranging from uh, commercial to independent films. As the first AC, he has worked uh, on various career themes like uh, The Bad Guy, Wing of Chaos, and then the award winning movie After My Death. Here with us today, also via video call, is first AC, San Jong Bill. Uh, welcome to RV Asia Hour, Mr. Bill. Hello. Hello. So, uh, Mr. Bill is with our friends from uh, Bangdo Sydney, Augustine uh, Singh. He will serve as the uh, interpreter for this session. Hi, Augustine, it's great nice to see you and Mr. Bill. Hello, Chris, well, it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, OK, so uh, the first question to uh, Mr. Bill is, uh, how are you coping with uh, social distancing as a focus for uh, nowadays? Has the current situation affected your job? So, coronavirus, uh,我当,我当,我当,我当,我当,我当,我当,我当,我当,我当,我当,我当,我当,我当,我当,我当,我当,我当,我当,我当,我当,我当,我当,我当,我当,我当,我当,我当,我当,我当,我当,我当,我
uh, the awards from the International Film Festival circuits. But basically, it is the story about a girl well, who got involved in well, her friend's the suicide. So basically, well, it is a very uh, sensitive and it is a very emotionally charged film. Um, emotionally charged film. And on the other hand, well, the bad guys, well, the reign of chaos is actually the film and uh, which stars uh, Mr. Don Lee, well, who is going to feature in the Eternals uh, produced by the Marvel production, Marvel production films. Well, maybe sometime around the next year or well, the year next, well, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, well, basically, well, this film itself is a spin-off film uh, from yeah. the television, uh, television shows, uh, which aired on the OCM. And well, this one is a story about well, a couple of a uh, the couple of a criminal guys well are going to fight against the organized crime and the corrupt government officials uh, because well, they want to, uh, they want to be free again. And well, it is really action packed film. So well, basically, well, I had a lot of fun during the set. Okay, so I see. So. Uh how was your approach as the first AC uh, when shooting both films? Uh, because you just mentioned uh, one is uh, has more uh, emotional scenes while the others uh, is filled with uh, action scenes. Is there any difference in uh, uh, on, on, on the focus? Mm-hmm. 포커스의 어떤 약속 같은 게 조금 없이 그냥 자유롭게 액션할 수 있게끔 하다 보니까 그런 것들이 둘다 포커스는 좀 어려웠고요. 그 차이점은 아마 이게 좀 제가 감정적으로 좀더 빠질 수 있게끔 좀 포커스의 어떤 그 이동 속도라든지 이런 것들을 좀더 예민하게 좀 했고요. 제 말은 주면 그리고 이제 나쁜 녀석들은 아마 그 액션에 가깝게 해서 좀 빠른 포커스의 이동이 좀 중요하게 적용됐던 작품들이었습니다. So just like he said, uh, with the one movie, the After My Death, is a very emotionally charged film. So basically, uh, the focus, uh, the focus has been at the plane. In a very vital role in developing the story itself. So basically, mm-hmm. well, I had to concentrate a lot on take by take and the scene by scene. So basically, we have to bring out the emotion uh, by mm-hmm. the focus. So basically, we had we had to focus. Uh, we had to concentrate on on okay, keeping the actors' concentrations and keeping actors' emotional uh, the the emotional momentums. On the other hand, mm-hmm. while the bad guys has just a, such a massive action scene. So basically well, just what I dimensioned, well, the, the take is that sometimes it is impossible to uh, to do another take. And at the mm-hmm. same time, well, the action is uh, sometimes, well, it is a shot uh, with a running gun style. So basically while well, we have a little bit of a tolerance range with, with a focus, uh, but at the same time, well, we, we basically have to be uh, very creative and very, uh, very fast paced. So basically, uh, we had a lot of uh, another concept of difficulties in those sets too. Yeah, just using your experience, your instinct to catch the focus. That's exactly like it, yes. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Mr. Bill, for sharing about your project with us. So before we move on to the panel discussion, let's bring back Adi to the live stream. Uh, welcome back, Adi. So we are also Hi, opening Chris. our live Q&A mm-hmm. session. So for our viewers, you can now post any question you have for Ari or for our guests on the chat box. Just click the question mark uh, button on the bar so the Q&A, just Q&A panel appear. 
it can be about uh, asking about RV electronic control system, our gas individual words, or focus pooling in general. Uh, don't forget to mention who your questions are addressed to. So lastly, uh, our RV ambassador are also here with us uh, to help the translation. So you can ask in your question, uh, ask your question in uh, native languages. So now let's move on to panel discussion. Some of our viewers may not be aware of this. So can you tell us uh, what is the primary task of a first ACR? How crucial is your role on set? Uh, Adi, maybe you can start first. OK, thank you, Chris. Um, yeah, for me, actually, as a focus puller or as a first AC, have um, a big, big role on set. And mm -hmm. actually, also not on set, even outside of the set. Uh, I mean, like, before we before we go to the shoe, we have to prepping all the equipment. Like we have to make sure that everything that we're gonna need for that kind of uh, particular project, uh, we mm -hmm. have it. And also, we have to make sure that everything is worked uh, perfectly, and yeah. we'll we'll run on the project, of course. Yeah, and uh, important on the set is because. Uh, technically, yes, we have mm -hmm. to make it sharp, even um, like almost every shot. And but sometimes, for me, for my personal things, uh, I look into the shot, I look to the board, I go into the story. Sometimes I felt things that maybe I don't make it sharp, mm -hmm. not because I cannot, but. Sometimes I feel the emotion. I mean, as a focus puller, also I have like to feel what the scene or what the story about. And like maybe with my work, with with about focusing on the pictures can represent represent a, a how the emotion on that shot or on that scene. Yeah, so is it all by your experience, your creativity? Yes. If I okay, do it I... like on the shot, like I make it blur uh, accidentally, uh, and after that, like no one complained and no one uh, like what shouting, why? what happened? What? <laughs> yeah, that's you know, important. I mean, yeah, I mean like I felt I go into the story, I go into the scene, mm. so I can felt yeah. And unless, unless like some someone or director like why 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 the picture is not sharp? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, correct, correct. So uh, is it the same for South Korea, Mr. Pio? Uh, are there any uh, differences in being a focus puller in South Korea compared to the other part of the world? 네, 지금 이제 한국에서도 이제 그 퍼스트 애쉬로스의 주인 임무가 뭐 다른 나라하고 이제 그 유사한지 아니면 이제 우리나라만의 뭐 가지고 있는 어떤 역할이 있는지 그런 것에 대해서 한번 부탁드리겠습니다. 우리나라에서는 이제 퍼스트 애쉬가 퍼스를 하고요. 이제는 그 참, 전반적인 노출을 좀 이제 재고요. 그 다음에 이제 진행, 촬영 전반적으로 이제 또 장비나 이런 것들에 대해서 진행을 좀 보고 있습니다. 촬영적으로요. 그리고 좀 다른 나라와 조금 차이가 있다면 좀 우리나라만의 도제 시스템이라고 하는데요. 그 도제 시스템이 이제 조금 촬영 감독이 되기 위해서 단계 단계를 밟아가는 느낌이 있어요. 그래서 이제 저 저도 물론 이제 좋은 촬영 감독이 되기 위한 하나의 과정을 겪고 있다고 생각이 생각을 합니다. Yeah, for the Korean productions, uh, we have a very pro professionally assigned role uh, for the each uh, film crews. And, but at the same time, well, uh, uh, the first AC's role is almost similar with uh, what Adi just uh, described right now. But while well, the, the Korea has a very special, uh, the special concept about the film, the production camera crew. And well, it is about the apprenticeship and well, people uh, regard the first camera assistant as a like a professional professional career uh, for like 
20 years or uh, 20 years later and the 30 years later well they mm. they just want to be <clears throat> they just consider the first ac job as a uh, as a kind of a, the career the step uh, towards the, the the camera director or the cinematographer so basically i think well that is the the what the, the korean camera team uh, has the unique uh, unique characteristics mm. Okay, I see. So it's a step by step uh, from the AC to the director, maybe. That's correct. Yes. Okay. So uh, as a first AC, uh, what do you usually have on hand? Can you show us uh, what tools or equipment you always have when you are shooting on set? So I see, I know uh, Mr. Bill, uh, you bring some tools with us today. So maybe you can go first. 그 퍼스트 AC로서 이제 그 촬영 현장에 이제 항상 가지고 다니는 장비가 있다면은 이제 어떤 것들이 있는지 이제 준비된 게 있다면 좀 보여주시죠. 이거는 제가 이제 현장에서 쓰는 스케일이고요. 그리고 이건 음, 메이저 스케일이고, 그다음 이거는 노출계인데 반사 노출계, 입사 노출계. 이건 항상 제가 촬영할 때 갖고 다니는 것들이고요. 이 뒤에 보시면 이제 제가 자, 일단 여기까지 자세히 먼저 하겠습니다. So basically, what we see here is that the, the physical scale and the mm -hmm. electronics, uh, electronic measurement scale, and also I have the spot meter, and also I have the reflective meter here. So basically, well, these are the, the tools and that I always carry on the set uh, with me, just like every time. And also, well, I have something else on my back. <laughs> 코스를 하려고 세팅한 모니터랑요. 17인치 모니터랑 저희 그 W4 그리고 뒤에 테라닥 달려 있고요. 이제 음료를 먹을 수 있게 그만은 컵 홀더들이 이렇게 달려 있고 이 뒤에 이제 부식 같은 거 넣을 수 있는 <웃음> 것들도 있습니다. 그래서 이렇게 해서 항상 제이 일하는 곳은 항상 이런 식으로 세팅이 되어 있습니다. So basically, well, these uh, these tools are the one of the most important tools of my work. Uh, I here I have the 17 inch video assist, and also I have the WCO4. Well, I also carry around the set, and also about well, the Teradex system, and also I have some the cup holder for the copies, and well, there, there is another utility bags uh, for the other accessories such as uh, batteries or sometimes I just uh, put uh, snacks in them too. <laughs> so basically, yeah. so basically well, these, are the, uh, these are the tools that I carry every time. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bill. So we now know what focus tool I need uh, when shooting in uh, South Korea. So what about you, Ali? Uh, what do you always use? Hi, um, maybe I'm not as as lucky as being in Korea to have all those luxurious toys, <laughs> but I will show some uh, some of my toys uh, because also because uh, I'm, I'm in the middle of the set. So um, let me go to the back the camera. Yeah, like normally focus pulling. I mean like tools like this, screwdrivers, okay, yes. mm. multi tools, and especially for every camera. Yes. <laughs> and this, just in case, go to the high head system, and we need to level up. Mm -hmm. And yes, this box I just made it by myself. It's customized, and not so neat. But one thing that I need to highlight is this. This one. Mm. This one is a uh, torch, but what what makes it special for me? It's ultraviolet torch. Ultraviolet torch, yes. Yes. Why I need this? Because sometimes I just uh, I go back to my camera first. Sorry. Yeah, I don't know why it happened to my. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so I just need to highlight about the ultraviolet torch. On my wireless remote focus system, and I put the on the focus mark focus uh, wheel. Mm. I put I put the uh, what do you call it? It's glow in the dark tape. 
uh, I accidentally doing that because most of the time on the action movie, on the mm. set it's so dark, so dark. So I need to see where's the mark, but I cannot use a torch because it will affect to the scene and affect to the set. So the tips is I use the glow in the dark, and I use the ultraviolet torch, and ah. I can. Even even on the dark, I still can see the mic. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's very useful tip. <laughs> so I know you also uh, have a DIY vest. Can you show us? Oh yeah, unfortunately, my second AC just exactly just now uh, took it from me and have to go to the set. Ah, okay, no, yeah, it's <laughs> I'm so okay. sorry. Yeah, it's a customized backpack. Uh, because nowadays, especially on the pandemic. Like everyone asking for compact crew, small mm. crew, and which have to uh, social distancing. So the thing is, I have to make everything is light. Everything has to be compact and easy, and only need some person to handle it. So I make I make the backpack with the wireless remote focus and a monitor recorder and battery packs and all the things is the one backpack and ready to go. Hit and run. Yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. So, uh, I noticed that both of you uh, mentioned uh, the WC4 in your go-to system. So, uh, can you tell us about uh, what WC4 uh, uh, why so special for the WC4 to you? Uh, Adi, maybe you go first. Okay, the WC4 is so special for me, especially in Jakarta, because. Mm -hmm. uh, it's only some unit that available here. I mean, not everyone has that. Mm -hmm. And the most important is for me on their tools is everything. Because everything you ask, everything you need, actually it's there, especially on uh, Alexa Mini or Ari. Yeah. You can have all the menu, you, have, you can have all the data, and at one simple tools, one simple hand unit, you can control everything from zoom in, zoom out, Irish, and focus specially, and all the features is there. You can read all the settings. Yeah, so to have the WC4 on set. Okay, nice. I see. So <laughs> is this also the same in South Korea, Mr. Pio? Is, it, uh, is the WC4 widely used in South Korea? so in South Korea, well, WCU4 has been has become the industry standard for the focus pulling system uh, because mm. all the reasons that, that Adi just mentioned right now, because well, it has all the comprehensive data uh, that focus pullers can communicate with, with the other people and also well, do uh, actually the pulling the focus. Uh, it is easy, it is intuitive, it is a very uh, effective. So basically, that is the reason why the WC4 is hugely popular in South Korea. Okay, I see. So I just uh, slightly go back to what Adi just mentioned, uh, because uh, in Indonesia, there is not uh, enough uh, WC4 on the market yet. So if any of our viewers are interested, uh, we actually have a hand unit and other RV electronic control system in our certified PO program, uh, which also called the CPO program. Uh, which means you can purchase them at a lower price, but still with the same quality. We will post the link in the chat box so you can go to our CPU web page and uh, when you have time. So uh, I saw a while ago, um, Mr. Pio, uh, you have a CPOS Mini RF uh, with you. So uh, can you tell us uh, how you, useful is it? Uh, and for those who don't know, CPOS Mini RF is an intelligent lens motor from RE that has an integrated radio module, eliminating the need for an additional receiver unit. So how was your experience uh, when using it, Mr. Bill? Hi, Bushin, Tommy. Uh, Mr. Bill, 
이제 이 경험이 어떠셨는지 한번 설명을 좀 부탁드리겠습니다. 일단 시퍼스 미니 RF 같은 경우에 세팅 시간이 좀 빨라져서 너무 좋았고요. 그리고 딜레이 부분이 바로 이제 모터랑 수신기가 연결되어 있으니까 좀 딜레이 부분이 거의 없는 걸로 이제 생각이 들 정도로 딜레이 부분에서 너무 좋아서 저희 포커스하기에 너무 편한 모터라고 생각이 듭니다. Yeah, from his experience, the the, the C Force Min uh, C Force Mini RF system is one of the uh, most uh, very uh, one of the most effective system uh, because uh, for the especially with the RE camera, well, the, mm -hmm. the setting and the, and the installation is just uh, so easy and uh, so fast, and especially well, the film production set is uh, very hectic and it is very busy and about uh, the crowd is a uh, very uh, sometimes well, the, the, the environment itself can be uh, very complicated and uh, within this kind of a situation and all those kind of a simplicity uh, has become uh, the advantage in terms of the production, uh, in terms of the production itself. Uh, OK, thank you for your experience. So uh, now I'm so sure. I just, I just yeah. missed a little bit of a in, uh, missing in translation. Uh, because what well, he mentioned also that uh, there is a uh, there is a uh, there is a literally no delay because yeah. while well, it has the, the, the transmission part, transmission part and the motor is everything is in just one one single unit so basically mm -hmm. well, the uh, well the focus pulling itself is very pleasure to work with. I see. I see. Okay. So uh, I'm sure our viewer would love to hear uh, some of your tips on using RE ECS since YouTube been working with the with them for so long. So can you give us any tips or tricks uh, you share with us? Uh, maybe Adi, you go first. Hi, uh, yeah. Uh, my tips um, on that. Especially on the wireless focus system on the WC4, and um, my tips is just actually almost you don't you don't have to do anything. Everything is there, and um, I mean like easy to install. Fast. Mm -hmm. You don't need you don't need like so messy wire, and everything is so compact and easy to use, and ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, how about you, Mr. Pio? 제그 현장에서 이제 그이 WCO4 시스템 같은 것들을 이제 사용하는 데 있어서 이제 아니면 이제 전반적인 포커스 풀링에 대해서 혹시 뭐 본인만이 구, 아, 가지고 계신 뭐 팁이나 트릭 같은 게 있으면 좀 설명 부탁드리겠습니다. 무선 포커스를 이제 사용함으로써 조금 그 좁은 장소나 좁은 세트장에 들어갈 때가 있어요. 그러면 조금 세트장 밖이나 장소 밖에서 이제 무선으로 포커스 해야 될 때가 있는데 그 세팅하기 전에 그 장소에 들어가서 어쨌든 전체적인 뭐 미술에 미술되어 있는 뭐 꽃병이라든지 뭐 등등 위치를 좀더 기억을 많이 하고요. 그리고 세트장 같은 데 들어갔을 때는 조금 전체적으로 가로 세로에 대한 수치를 재놓고 그 다음에 그 카메라의 어떤 사이즈나 이런 것들을 계산한 후에 이제 세트장에 들어가서 포커스 풀링을 하고 있습니다. Right, especially with uh, working with a uh, very uh, confined set, for example, and well, it is uh, sometimes it is a uh, very difficult uh, to uh, difficult to work just right beside the camera. So, but especially with uh, using the WCO4, uh, mm -hmm. I sometimes go into this uh, confined, confined space and I will just uh, get well every single props and the and the and the general uh, the size of the set in, in the foremost, and then afterwards, well, uh, people uh, people and the and the camera goes into the set. I just uh, just do uh, pull the focus in the outside of the set. Well, just remembering uh, what I previously checked uh, within the set, and that would be really helpful uh, to uh, to that would be really helpful to give me an idea about uh, what is going on inside of the set, even though I'm not physically attending the set uh, myself. Mm. 
and that would be a very nice tip for the wireless uh, for the wireless focus focus pooling system. Okay, I see, I understand. So uh, aside from what our guest has mentioned, I think a lot of uh, focus pooler out there still are uh, using a market mark, uh, uh, the focus uh, mark on on the make uh, on the focus ring. But actually, we have a pre-market focus ring uh, with different matrix uh, or imperial scale available for the WC4. So maybe you guys can also check that out. So yes, uh, now, uh, yeah. So now a lot of us uh, know that uh, motion picture industry has been uh, evolving for uh, in the past decades. Is this also the same for focus cooler? Are there any few changes uh, with your way of uh, working and also with the tools you use, uh, Mr. Bill? Hangi这个 좀 자유로운 연기와 자유롭게 그 배우들이 동선을 잡고 움직이고 그거에 대해서 이제 포커스는 조금 더 디지털로 오면서 좀 어려워진 건 사실인데 이게 또 이제 WC4나 뭐 이런 기술적인 뭐 UDM이나 이런 기술적인 발전이 있어서 그게 조금 더 포커스하기에는 좀더 편하 뭐 필름 때는 보다 약속은 없지만 좀더 편하게 포커스를 할수 있었습니다. Okay, well, during the film, uh, film produ production, well, that actually used the physical films, well, and those uh, practices uh, had a lot of rules and regulations and pre-arranged the promises between the actors and the camera crews and the directors. So basically, well, on the other hand, well, with, with the digital, uh, digital cameras and the wireless uh, focus pooling systems, well, the technology helped us, helped us a lot. Well, for the, the simplifying these kind of procedures. But at the same time, well, there are a lot of choices uh, nowadays. So a lot of creative choices and a lot of uh, a lot of different uh, different options have been given uh, given to us by the technology. So in the in one hand, it has become our life much easier. But on the mm. hand, well, the, the film production process itself has been much more complicated than compared uh, to the film era. Okay, understand. So how about you, Adi? Yeah, um, what happened here in Jakarta, I mean like nowadays, like especially on the COVID-19 things, uh, everyone have to be aware, about healthy, and also uh, it makes me as a proper schooling cannot be as close as normally we have. I mean, the situation a bit different now, but we still have to keep on, uh, I mean, keep on positive. And the system on wirelessly, it's quite really, really helpful. I agree with Miss Kim and Byun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, uh, it helps, it helps me a lot as a focusing point on the set, even though, okay. Yeah, I have to be like a distance, but still mm. can see the set, still mm. can see the action for the talent, uh, and still can make it sharp. Everything. <laughs> okay, so Adi, yeah. I want to chip in another question. So, as a focus puller, how are you uh, adapting to the transition from a super fluidified to a large format? Because I think uh, a lot of country are now looking forward to shooting in uh, large format. What a coincidence, I just shoot that uh, Ari Mini LF large format last two mm. days ago. Yeah. And adapting for me, especially the, I mean, how we look into the, the, the lens normally, uh, like normally I just see the, the board and I can tell here using this uh, size of lens. Now I'm a bit still uh, adapting and like normally here is 35. 
So, but with using the large format, it's look no, why so go wider now? <laughs> like yeah, yeah, because yeah, of course, because you have a wider range of uh, sensors, and but yeah, get used to it. And also for the sharp, for me a bit tricky because it feels like a bit the depth of field. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, it's a bit more narrow but challenging and yeah, correct. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's I mean, more shallow depth of field. Yeah, shallow depth of field, but uh, also nice to to have the look for the sensors. Yes. And I think it's also not uh, only for me as focus polling, but it's also adapt for every department on the set, especially art. Because no, yeah. uh, normally they know 25 millimeters, uh, 30, uh, super 35 is like this wide or this size to build the set. But now they have to build more because we can <laughs> see more. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Correct, correct. So how about in South Korea? A lot, a lot, a lot of uh, South Korean movie are already shot in uh, large format. Uh, how have you adopted to the transition, a uh, transition to large format, Mr. Bill? Yeah, 한국에서도 이제 그 점점 이제 라지 포맷으로 촬영하는 영화 프로젝트들이 많아지고 있는 걸로 알고 있는데요. 네. 이제 그 이런 이 슈퍼 35에서 이제 라지 포맷으로 넘어가는 이제 그 변화들이 어떻게 적응하고 계신지 궁금합니다. 제가 뭐 개인적으로 아직까지 그 라지 포맷으로 찍은 영화는 없지만 뭐 커머셜이나 이런 뭐 경험하고 또 이제 경험한 친구들의 이야기를 들어보면 어쨌든 포커스가 정말 민감하고 어려운 환경인 거는 인지를 다 똑같이 하지만 이제 뭐 촬영은 어차피 35, 슈퍼 35mm든 라지 포맷이든 방법은 또 하나고 그걸 또좀 적응해야 되는 환경이라고 생각이 들어요. 지금 이제 현대 포커스 플러는 계속 점점 더 어려워지는 상황 속을 마주할 텐데 지금의 뭐 WCU4와 또 UDM 뭐 등등 여러 가지 장비들을 통해서 좀 극복을 해 나가려고 생각하고 있습니다. So basically, well, he says uh, he hasn't experienced the large format shooting yet, but actually, mm. uh, what he hears uh, from his friends or about his colleagues or who had been working in the large format set, well, the difficulty is there for sure. But at the same time, well, the large format is just one of the tools uh, to shoot a film, just like a super 35 millimeter do. So basically, well, we eventually have to adapt well, no matter how uh, different of the format is. Uh, and well, he believes that well, uh, the technologies which is incorporated into the WC4 and the UDM and uh, such, mm. uh, such technology will uh, guide us through uh, this kind of a transition. Okay, okay, I understand, thank you. So uh, it's not like we already have a couple of questions from our audience. So uh, maybe let's start with the first, uh, first question. Uh, this is the question from Gus. Uh, what, re what requirements should we consider to select the electronic or mechanic lens control equipment with different styles uh, of shooting? Uh, Mr. Bio, here. The more focus system and the general focus system. 이제 어, 어떤 상황에 따라서 뭐 이런 그, 음. 그 포커스 플링 시스템을 선택을 해야 되는 상황이 있는지 거기에 대해서 물어보겠습니다. 저 제가 먼저 대답했습니다. 네. 뭐 제가 개인적으로는 어쨌든 조금 줌 렌즈의 포커스의 뎁스들이 조금 길좀 넓거든요. 그러니까 그, 그래서 이제 좀 망원 쪽에서 좀이 WC 포나 하는 것을 쓰다 보면 전제적인 걸 쓰다 보면 조금 그안 맞는 경우들이 좀 생기더라고요. 좀 이제 그 뎁스들이 구간이 길다 보니까 그래서 저는 줌 렌즈나 조금 이런 렌즈들을 쓸 때는 좀 매뉴얼 포커스를 사용을 하고요. 그리고 그 외적으로 이제 조금 거의 대부분은 이제 줌 렌즈 말고 좀 대부분의 렌, 단 렌즈들은 WC4를 사용하고 있습니다. So uh, basically, what he says is that the current uh, current electronic uh, electronic control system is mm. 
or just it does the job really beautifully, well, especially when it comes to uh, comes to wide angle lenses and the uh, and the, the standard uh, standard lenses. But uh, with the zoom lenses and the telescopic lenses, uh, sometimes the uh, the depth of a field is uh, so narrow, so mm -hmm. that will be uh, sometimes I really have to be precise with those lenses, and in that time, well, I ha I really have to use the manual focus and uh. the mechanical. System. Yeah, OK, I see. So how about you, Adi? Yeah, um, I agree also with Bill. It's uh, on a on the certain lens. We need really, really precise about that. But uh, also I want to add more information. And for me, on the electronic uh, and apart, uh, EDS, electro, uh, it's important yeah, for me. System. Yeah, electronic control system. I mean, it's mm. really important, especially when the lens is uh, comfortable also uh, using the LDS system. I mean, uh, it, it communicates between the lens and the hand unit. It, it will show you all the information, their profile. Yeah, yeah. will show you the uh, it will calculate for me automatically mm -hmm. on that screen how how long is my depth of field and how how much is my room mm -hmm. to have the sharpness and also one more thing for me is uh, it will help not only focus puller not only in camera department but it also will help uh, other department such as mm -hmm. if we're using the LDS system on the lens. Uh, we can we can give the information into the metadata and give especially when we shoot like chroma key or we're gonna shoot like uh, visual effects uh, yeah. short it will it will give you a lot of information that you're gonna need on the on the post later on so yes it it's helped me and everyone okay thank you so uh, I have another question uh, from Patrick. It is for uh, for both AC. So, what are some of the differences you experience in a film set or a commercial set? Uh, from Pat to being on set, are cinematographer uh, normally shooting at a higher T stop in frame? Uh, so, uh, Adi, you you want to go first? Uh, sorry, can I just uh, uh, repeat? So, uh, I think uh, the question uh, from Patrick is: uh, Is there any difference uh, when you are shooting uh, a film or a commercial? Uh, are the cinematographer usually shooting uh, at a higher T stop uh, in frame? Okay, uh, I don't know how to say this, but is it I'm lucky, or uh, I already get used to it now? And because I most of the time I met the great cinematographers and mm. the great DP to work with before, and uh, they like to love me to give all the maximum of the lens, like uh, wide open one nine in master primes or uh, mm. like in signatures. But now for me, um, is it's uh, I, I mean, if you know how the measurement, if you know how the character of the lens, if you know about the depth of field, mm -hmm. uh, actually, um, it's much more easier. I mean, not only because it's a narrow depth of field, but also as a focus puller, we have to think. Must be there's a reason why the cinematographer to to give you that. Uh, he stop to set up. Maybe there's another like reason for the set. Give the the look. Give something mm. like for the beautiness. So yes, we have to deal with it. And I'm sure if we nail it, it will make a really really great great shot. Okay, I see. So how about uh, for South Korea? Is focus pulling for film uh, different from TV drama? Yeah. Uh, 그 포커스 플링이 이제 뭐 텔레비전 드라마 현장이나 
뭐 영화 현장에서 차이점이 없나 어떤 것들이 있어요? 우리나라에서 드라마와 영화의 포커스의 차이점은 좀 포커스에 대한 시간적인 여유가 조금 드라마 쪽에서는 많이 없습니다. 그 이유는 이제 하루에 찍어야 될 분량들이 많이 있다 보니까 그래도 조금 기계적인 포커스를 할 경우들이 많이 생기고요. 그 영화는 좀더 그에 반면에 좀더 창의적이고 조금 이제 촬영 감독님과 소통하면서 좀 포커스풀링 좀 일할 수 있는 것들이 좀 많이 시간적인 여유들이 많이 생깁니다. So basically, the main difference is about well the time of the shoot. Uh, because mm -hmm. well, well within the with the, the television uh, television show, and well we have a lot of text uh, text to shoot. So basically, it gives just so little time uh, to put uh, uh, put a little bunch of uh, creative options into those kind of a shooting situations. On the other hand, well uh, for the film shoot, well we have much uh, much more breathing room in terms of uh, creative options. Because well, uh, we have a uh, much less uh, workload uh, for the for the film shoot. So basically, we have a much uh, much longer uh, longer breathing room in terms of like working for the focus and we'll discuss about the scenes and discuss about uh, what kind of effect we want and what kind of emotion we want to bring. So basically, well, uh, the one. Uh, Well, during the TV shows, where we have much more mechanical way of working, but on, on the film set, where we have a much more creative way of working. Okay, I see. <coughs> so I have a question for my uh, for my anonymous. Uh, will there be any difference to follow focus between time lens and zoom lens? Uh, we want to ask both of you. So uh, maybe Mr. Bill first. 그러니까 그 프라임 렌즈들을 이제 포커스 풀링하는 거하고 네. 그줌 렌즈들을 포커스 풀링하는 거하고는 네. 어떤 차이점이 있는지 설명해 주시기 바랍니다. 뭐 아까 잠깐 제가 말씀드렸다시피 줌 렌즈는 좀 경통이 좀 넓어가지고 이돌그 돌아가는 것들에 대한 범위가 좀 넓, 넓어요. 그냥 네. 포커스의 범위가 좀 넓다 보니까 조금 그거에 대해서 좀더좀더좀 디테일하고 좀 줌이 또 이제 줌 렌즈 쓴 이유는 좀 망원으로 많이 땡기려고 쓰다 보니까 거기서 이제 좀더 디테일한 포커스들이 좀 이루어져야 되고 프라임 렌즈들은 조금 이제 뭐 같은 디테일이긴 하지만 조금 그 W 슈퍼나 이런 거에 연결해서 이한 손에 다 들어와서 이게 진짜 뭐 갑자기 다가왔다가 멀어지더라도 그걸 빨리빨리 적응할 수 있게끔 해서 포커스를 저는 개인적으로 그렇게 하고 있습니다. So basically, we have a difference between zoom and the prime uh, and well, the way of walking. And uh, for the zoom lenses, well, the physical, the diameter of the zoom lenses is uh, very, uh, very thick. So basically, we have to be uh, very careful about well, the how, the how far well, the focus lens goes. And well, we really have to put a uh, uh, put a lot of a concentration uh, while mm. you know, focus on the zoom lens. On the other hand, well, for the prime lenses, where well, we can uh, well, I'm just like a 100% rely on the, the on on the data uh, that I see from the W uh, WCU board screen uh, because well, it has a, such a uh, such a precise uh, data and a precise uh, precise control. Of the the increment of the of the of the focus range, and also where I have the, the very detailed information about the depth of field. So basically, well, for the prime lenses, it is much more easier for me. Okay, so the first AC uh, design the iris value in, in South Korea. I beg your pardon. <laughs> uh, so in South Korea, uh, can the first AC design the iris value? 아, 한국에서는 이제 그 퍼스트 A 씨가 이제 그 F 스타 아, T 스타 밸류를 네. 이제 결정을 하는지 거기 대해서. 네, 뭐한 어, 씬에 들어가서 한 씬의 대략적인 것은 그 촬영 감독님과의 얘기를 해서 대략적인 걸 잡고요. 그리고 이제 
커스테이시가 대략적인 걸 잡고 그 장면, 그러니까 한 컷, 컷마다는 이제 촬영 감독님이 조금 더그 안에 조금 더 디테일, 뭐 3분의 1 넣는다든지 닫는다든지 하는 경우들이 많습니다. So while doing the pre-production stage, while the first day C, well, I propose about a certain, mm. a certain uh, tista uh, value uh, to the to the camera directors and the board directors. But well, during the set, well, as you as you are aware of, well, everything just the changes on the set and the, the camera director sometimes well just to put a little bit more, a little bit more T stops or a little bit less T stops. Well, it just sort of decided upon the spot. Okay, I see. So, uh, what is your experience in uh, Indonesia, Adi? Um, experience on for T stop. For uh, the zoom yeah. and run, uh, yeah, both, yeah. Okay, on the desktop, normally it's, it's not my my design, I mean, it's not my call to put the desktop. Mm -hmm. But uh, as a first AC, I mean, I also responsible at least to remind the DP, or we can chat, we can, we can have the discussion about the desktop that we're gonna uh, use. Uh, but also when when I just put the camera on the set and frame up mm. roughly, roughly, and I just because there's a feature on the camera that show you the false color roughly, at least uh -huh. we can put the normal exposure to at, at, at least like all the all the department they want to see the frame, see the monitors, uh, they don't see the blown uh, image or dark image. At least I just put. Uh, roughly normal aperture, but on the shoot, uh, the DP will will measure all everything's on precise, and they will put also uh, as he required for the desktop. Yeah, but okay, is, so the communication between uh, first AC and the DP is very important. Yeah, yeah, of course, especially like uh, there's a discussion before the shoot. Like I want to shoot this project because the mood is like this it's for beauty it's for action it's for because like for example uh, different project is different feel like landscape of course you want to see all the details so they, they will give us like more more depth of feel and uh, it's a bit different on the beauty uh, shoot like you want like softness and that that those kind of effect so he will put like wide open to see more details of the skin and everything she has. But for the, like what I said, uh, as the first I see is not my call. But mm -hmm. after I know, after I know what what that the DP want to achieve, at least I can I can remind, I can work with, I can discuss with the the DP about the desktop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, and, I see, I see. For the zoom and the prime lens, that's a that's a bit different. There's a lot of different actually for those both lenses, especially for the zoom. I have another uh, treatment for the zoom. Before mm. the before the shoot, I have to make sure come come to the rental house. Oh, okay. What I have what I have to do is I have to make sure that the zoom still work properly when I put on the wide, widest range and I maximum zoom, uh, is it still on the spot on after I zoom? Mm. Uh, okay, roughly, yeah, because sometimes I met the lens that is not really good condition. So if I maximum zoom, it will shifting. It will, so you have uh, to do all the preparation before the shooting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have okay. to make sure all the lenses work perfectly. Mm. And sometimes the trick is, as as a focus puller, especially on the on a certain focal length, it will mm. give you different different distance. For example, like on the fifty, on the hundred, it will it will show you on the focus ring in it's on ten feet, for example. Mm -hmm. But after you maximum zoom on the two fifty, it will it will shifting a bit. The, the focus mark is it will be like on the 12 feet or 15 feet. Yeah, so okay. that's the thing. Mm, that's the okay. difference, especially on the prime or zoom. But for yeah. the depth of field and how we shoot with mm. that, those uh, with those lenses, 
I mean, I mean, it's almost the same. Yeah, okay, understand. So uh, we come to the last question from our audience. So uh, this is the question for both of you. Is there any kind of uh, official training uh, or mentorship for focus pooling? So uh, Adi, have you go through any official training or mentorship? <clears throat> um, first thing, uh, first thing is you have to know and you have to learn more about lenses, mm -hmm. basically. How every lenses has their own characters, has their own uh, specialties. You have to know how, you have to know what can do, uh, what lens can do about it. And mentoring about, to be as a focus pulling, it's, it's a bit silly, but it's worth to try. Uh, those days I always bring, uh, for example, like a small uh, laser distance, distometer. Mm. Mm. I just like, I always put it on my pocket and I just walk. Uh, on on my daily, I uh, just pointing something, pointing to the some point, and I measure how how distance is that, and it will okay. like give me small small practice. So at least mm -hmm. in every day, as a focus pulling, you, you will learn and get used to it. Also with the the distance. Yeah, I see. I see. So, how about Mr. Uh, Bill, uh, in South Korea? Have you go through any uh, official training to become a focus puller? 이제 한국 같은 경우에는 이제 뭐 공식적으로 뭐 포커스 풀링 직업을 이제 얻을 수 있도록 이제 뭐그 교육을 하는 기관이라든지 멘토십 프로그램 같은 게 있네요. 근데 뭐 우리나라에서는 영화에 대한 커뮤니티나 뭐 영화 학과 등 이제 좀 관심이 있으면 좀 시작할 수 있는 부분이 이 촬영 팀에 대한 부분인데요. 이게 뭐 도제 시스템이라든지 뭐 근로 이제 현장 근로 시간이라든지 조건에 의해서 중도 하차하는 경우들이 많이 있습니다. 그래서 촬영부로 좀 살아남게 되려면 촬영 전반적인 진행, 운영 뭐 이런 거를 좀 이해할 수 있어야 되고요. 그리고 카메라의 특성과 렌즈 뭐 기본적인 이해도가 조금 높아야 되는 게 사실이고요. 그리고 이제 요즘에 LF라든지 좀좀 음, 포커스가 좀더 어려워지고 있는 상황 속에서 시간의 촉박함, 그 다음에 뭐한컷한컷 집중이 좀 필요한 작업이고요. 포커스 플로에 대한 책임감 등 작품에 대한 임하는 자세들이 좀 중요한 것 같습니다. So focus p l o r job is considered as one of the most important jobs for the camera crews, and well. As long as you have the passion and the determina uh, determination uh, to become uh, uh, to become a camera director or the cinematographer, well, mm. the, the puller is one of the best way to do that because in South Korea, where we have the apprenticeship system, and as as you are doing the first camera assist, first assistant camera, and then what you are going to see a lot of different aspects about the camera team. Well, not, it is not only for the uh, pulling the focus, uh, but also while checking out the, the camera position and taking uh, taking care of the all the the pre-production camera test and the lens test and the and all kind of different uh, different technical stuffs. And mm -hmm. at the same time, well, if you start as a camera department crew. And you're going to uh, you're going to learn a lot uh, from these kind of uh, the set experience. So basically, in South Korea, it's very important. Uh, not only just like uh, getting the, the university degree, uh, but mm -hmm. also uh, the participate participating the, a lot of the, the film sets as a as as a the, as a camera assistant. And it well those kind of experience on the set is going to is but well, it is going to work. As a the most effective education for the anybody who wants to become the focus pro or the first camera assistant. All right, well, that was very insightful. Uh, we hope our guests are able to answer all of our audience questions. So, all right, that's all for the time we have for our aviation hours. Thank you, Adi. Thank you, Mr. Bio and Augustine for joining us today, and also to Bang Dosini for helping us to out. Uh, we definitely learned a lot 
uh, from you guys and we really appreciate you sharing your expertise and experience with us and our audience today. We wish you both good luck in your future project. Uh, thank you also to all our viewers for joining us today and for all your questions. We hope you once again enjoy RV Asia Hour. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram at RV underscore Asia and Facebook at RV Asia. This episode will be available online soon, so you can watch it again later. If you miss any of your questions or if you have more to ask about RA ECS, you can message us on Facebook or Instagram. For more about RV electronic control system, you can also visit our webpage in uh, RV.com. It contains all our webinars, including RV Tech Talk Live. We will post the link in the chat box so you can have a look. And that's the web. See you guys in the next RV Asia hours. Bye bye. Goodbye, guys. Bye bye. Goodbye, Adi. Pleasure to meet you.